Hello, true duelists. It's YGO Strat's Yu-Gi-Oh! Single Card History, where I'm going to be talking about some of the cards that have impacted Yu-Gi-Oh! throughout the years, and some of the other ones that just didn't. Today's card, one third of the oh-so-abusable Dark Warrior package, Armageddon Knight. Armageddon Knight was first released in Phantom Darkness as a super rare in 2008. Notable reprints to date include a rare printing in Turbo Pack Booster 1 in 2009, a peasant rare in the Pendulum Domination Structure Deck, and most recently as of this video, in the Shadal Showdown Structure Deck again as a Peasant Rare in 2020. For time on the ban list, it spent a good 10 years or so unlimited after its release before being limited on the December 2018 ban list, where as of this video, it has stayed ever since. A level 4 Dark Attribute Warrior type monster with 1400 attack and 1200 defense, its effect reads, when this card is summoned, you can send one Dark monster from your deck to the graveyard. Armageddon Knight is actually one of six monsters known as the Attribute Knights, a series of monsters all designed around sending monsters of the core six attributes from the deck to the graveyard. The difference is, the other five Attribute Knights suck, and besides, I guess, Dawn Knight and early Drytron builds, have never seen play in competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! The real comedy of this is that Armageddon Knight is the oldest of them and somehow still the best. Which is true to form for Yu-Gi-Oh! since Dark is just always so much better for generic abuse, isn't it? Not just in terms of the cards that it can send to the grave, but even in terms of how this particular attribute knight gets its effect off. Shore Knight sends water monsters if its battle position changes, Altitude Knight has to have a monster bounce to the hand, and Dawn Knight has to leave the field, which prior to Link summoning was no easy task. But Armageddon Knight? You just summon it. Not even a normal or special summon specifically, just summon. As Blade as they can be about making it playable, and going by its current usage chart from YGOTopDecks.com, it's pretty clear that this card saw some play over the course of its lifetime. The first home to abuse this card was fittingly an Armageddon for the game, according to some people, with Dark Arm Dragon being released in the same set as the boy himself here, and man did the meta change up pretty quickly. The set gave us Armageddon Knight, Dark Arm Dragon, Allure of Darkness, and Dark Greffer all in one go, and each of them would be part of a dad deck that is Dark Armed Dragon at some point in the coming year. Dark Armed Return quickly showed itself to be the deck of choice, using all the dark good stuffs of the day coupled with the then limited dimension fusion and unlimited return from the different dimension. Banishing cards for Dad and even Strike Ninja in some decks, such as Adam Korn's second place decklist from Shonen Jump Championship Houston in 2008, manipulating the dark monster count in your graveyard was paramount. An Armageddon Knight was just about the best way to add to the monster count not named Foolish Burial. And Armageddon Knight had other uses in the deck beyond just being better than Foolish Burial at the time. It was also Dark Attribute itself, meaning it was fuel for Dark Armed, could serve as a banish for a lure of darkness, and could be summoned off of Mystic Tomato to help set up the grave count even more precisely and practically. All factors which made it a mainstay in dad decks throughout the Dark Armed meta. This was bolstered with the release of Duelist Genesis, which gave us the single Pro era, and once Plague Spreader Zombie was released, it had become even better, doing everything it did for Dad Return, as well as setting up Synchro Summons for Teledad, the continuation and somehow even stronger meta deck that Dark Armed Return had been in early 2008. Once Teledad, as it was known, was properly hit though, it would be a short while before Armageddon Knight was brought back into the competitive scene. Some zombie decks played it as another means to get good darks like the aforementioned Plague Spreader Zombie or even Goblin Zombie into the grave so as to bring them back and make other plays, and some Insector decks would even play it, because it could put Hornet into the grave, and once Hornet's in the graveyard, Insector is ready to ruin gameplay in Yu-Gi-Oh!, which is what Insector as a deck does best. The next long-term home for Armageddon Knight, though, would be Infernity, starting in 2013, with the deck's ability to vomit rank 4 monsters while abusing its powerful counter trap, Infernity Barrier. If Infernity got the right opening hand going first, it was almost impossible for them to lose. The deck was one of the earliest forms of a break my board style of deck that Yu-Gi-Oh had seen, and man did it do an impeccable job of it. The deck did go through some changes over the year or two that it was viable, from maining multiple pieces of back row removal to ensure plays could go through, to the 2014 World Championship build, running triple soul charge and upstarts to keep its hand as empty as possible and its 
field as full as it could. Armageddon Knight wasn't as popular as his brother Dark Greffer in Infernity decks, one being a Foolish Burial on Summon and the other being a Discard and Foolish Burial, which really helped the deck accomplish its goals a little bit better, needing an empty hand and all. But it was still played regardless. Able to get a Stygian Street Patrol to the graveyard to summon an Infernity Archfiend from your hand, or maybe bin an Archfiend Harris to get an Infernity Archfiend into your hand. Either way, it was once again a very solid card, being a Foolish Burial on legs, a potential banish off a lure, and most importantly in the Xyz era, it was level 4, which meant it could be used to make the deck's power plays from its extra deck, a possible material for a Lavalval chain to set up cards into your graveyard, or as material to summon a Diamond Direwolf in order to pop an already used Lavalval chain on your field to clear space for more summons. Yeah, that was the shit we did before Link Summoning. We blew up our own cards and won worlds doing it. <laughs> Infernity was a top contender in hat format, and while it was one of Armageddon Knight's homes for a time, it wouldn't be the last. The release of Duelist Alliance would see it played in Shadal, being an extra copy of Foolish Burial on Legs once again that could tutor any of the Shadal's graveyard effects. This meant normal summoning Armageddon Knight could be a Stratos for a Shadal by sending Hedgehog, a substitute Breaker the Magical Warrior by sending Dragon to pop a spell or trap, an upstart on Legs by sending Shadal Beast, or setting up Falco for synchro plays and general revival by setting up Falco. The versatility made it fantastic in Shadal, and once again it being dark helped it again, being solid as material for Winda, which was a very annoying and solid card that Shadals could, and even to this day, do play. Even with the release of Mathematician, Armageddon was still often a one of being able to send the higher level darks when needed, and as a better attribute than Little Einstein here, although Mathematician did offer the draw when it left the field 9 times out of 10, unless you used it as fusion for Shekinaga, which, you know, words more plays, so generally people preferred it. Didn't stop the knight from being a solid one of in most builds, however. It saw play next as a tech in early Necroz format in Necroz because yet again there was a dark monster players wanted in their graveyards. Gee, isn't that a common thing that you've heard me say throughout this video, let alone in this entire game? This time round it was to send Jin Releaser of Rituals, which could be used as ritual material in the graveyard to prevent people from playing Yu-Gi-Oh! Gotta love this game. This wasn't the most popular of techs as it was more often than not easier to just make a Lavalval chain to send Jin, but it wasn't uncommon either. This deck from Federico Zappini used to get 4th place at YCS Bochum in 2015, main decked the knight, with it being a Rota target and even maining a Shadal Dragon as well to use as means to pop back row before committing to the place. Once Jin was banned however, Armageddon Knight was quickly dropped from Necroz deck lists. You can probably understand why if you understand the fact that water attribute is different from the dark one. It next up play in Dark Draco Pals, a spicy spin on the then recently neutered Pepe decks in 2016. This was never the best deck of its time, probably more accurately seen as the fourth best deck after PK Fire, Monarchs, and Cosmo, but it was a damn fun and solid one nonetheless. Doing the standard Draco Pal plays to make rank 4 boards and abuse Ignister himself, the Dark variant teched in usually two copies of Armageddon Knight, and then a Shadal Dragon and a Blackwing Zephros as well. This gave them the, by this point in the game, pretty standard play of using Armageddon Knight to pop back row with Dragon, or even sending a Zephros to bounce a Pendulum Scale to hand, and now you have two fours on board before you make your Pendulum. This was important because it gave the deck access to Evil Swarm Nightmare, a rank 4 Xyz for dark decks only that has a non-once-per-turn Book of Eclipse effect for special summons, which if you aren't aware is pretty damn good. This was a neat tech for the deck, and was again a niche home for our Foolish on Legs here that had been relevant for 8 years at this point in time. Late 2016 and into 2017 would see the rise of problematic decks in Yu-Gi-Oh! that would hit a peak in 2018. But if you ask me, it all starts with Dark Synchro. Dark Synchro is a deck I've covered a good amount of time before, but it would abuse generic dark attribute cards and especially Level Eater to make only the most degenerate Synchro monsters available and loop the opponent out of their entire hand before they even got a chance to play. God, you just really gotta love Yu-Gi-Oh! Matter of fact, the single card history on GoFu covers this deck pretty well, so you can check out that video if you want to hear more about Dark Synchro in general, but in it, Armageddon Knight was the same role it had been since 2008, a solid allure banish in some hands, and setting up your graveyard otherwise. This time, special mention goes to sending Level Eater for damn near endless Synchro summons, and 
Synchro Fusionist in some variants as well. Dark Synchro would fall out of favor somewhat with the release of Master Rule 4, but that just gave rise to Dark Warrior Turbo, which was much of the same in practice, just using Lynx instead of Synchros. The deck would play the best generic Dark and now Warrior especially tools to Lynx spam, and this time the goal was to get out Topologic Gumblar Dragon, which could reliably rip four cards from the opponent's hand. Once again, Armageddon Knight was in the deck to set up graveyard plays, only this one it had more emphasis on sending Destiny Hero Malicious or even a Destrudo to set up the grave and make their plays. And more importantly than that, this is one of the times where the lack of a once per turn on this card could really shine. Because for the first time in a truly top deck, its warrior typing wasn't just useful but truly important, because that meant Armageddon Knight was not only good as a material to summon Azold, but could also be a good Azold target, summoning off her second effect to help extend even farther. And there's no once per turn, so if you're normal summoning Armageddon Knight and then specialing a second one, you're dumping two cards. This deck here is Gabriel Vargas's first place deck list from YCS Niagara in 2018, and again shows Armageddon Knight in a top spot, here being used to send Malicious just about 9 times out of 10. Its rampant abuse over that decade we've just covered, having finally caught Konami's attention, it was limited in December of 2018, but that was not the last of play that it would see. The card shows up in a few Spiral builds to send Spiral Master Plan if you don't open any of their standard better plays, and its last home competitively at this point has been Orcist, a deck famous for having a Dark Lock and needing any two monsters with different names to go full combo. Armageddon Knight was right at home in Orcus decks, again as a foolish on legs to send any Orcist or an Orcus Nightmare, or even the World Legacy Wand to just get any sort of effect or play the deck would need. It could then be used as material to make any Nightmare monster, to link into Nightmare Mermaid, and hey look at that, you've got full combo. The short version is the deck could reliably make a first turn board of two set copies of the Phantom Knight's Fogblade, a summoned Rusty Bardish, and an Orcus Dingirsu in the graveyard alongside Symbol Skeleton and Orcus Babble face up on the field. This meant that during the course of the opponent's turn, Orcus players would almost guaranteed have the ability to set off two Fogblades for monster effect negation, as well as summoning Orcus Dingirsu to remove one card via non-targeted non-destruction and pop another card with Dingirsu and Rusty Bardish both going off once Symbol Skeleton revived it from the grave. And all it took to get it going was any two monsters. There's been plenty of other decks that this card saw play in that I haven't mentioned. Things like Luna Light Danger Builds, Dark Hero Decks, Chaos Lightsworn Decks, hell, even Jesse Cotton's infamous Dark World FTK, where he ruined a YCS for a literal child, was playing two copies of Armageddon Knight, which <laughs> maybe I bring it up too much, but that the fact that happened is as funny to me as the first day I heard it. Point is, if your deck played Dark Monsters, there's a damn good chance this card was in consideration for you to play at one point or another. Dark as an attribute and Warrior as a type are two of the best in regards to attributes and types in all of Yu-Gi-Oh! And there's argument that that particular combination of attribute and type is one of the best possible combinations in all of Yu-Gi-Oh! in general. Those two factors proved it searchable by Rhoda, summonable off as old, used as fuel for an allure of darkness, a foolish burial, and things like Dark Armed Dragon enabled by it, as well as countless other strategies. Even limited to one, this card is one of the best enablers for more plays than I could possibly list in just one video. And it's quite possibly one of the best possible choices of cards for you to use Ash Blossom on, if not downright one of the most cards hit by Ash Blossom in general. Overall, this card is a Yu-Gi-Oh powerhouse. Printed and viable since 2008, Armageddon Knight is as powerful of a normal summon as it is a special summon later in a combo, whether you're starting or continuing one. The varieties of decks it's been solid in have been solid to downright fantastic, and it has produced a what? 15-ish minute video? I think that's where I'm at right now. If that right there isn't hint enough to how useful it's been, I don't know what could be. It's been a meta staple for roundabouts a decade, and even limited, still it's one of the best play starters in the game. It's pretty safe to assume this card will be limited for quite some time, and if you're playing a deck that likes dark monsters, or just using the graveyard in any capacity and has a couple of dark monsters in it, you're gonna consider using this card in some number of your decks. And so, that's our look at 
at Yu-Gi-Oh! Single Card History Armageddon Night. Stay tuned for our next video and feel free to suggest some cards to review or what type of video you'd like to see. Don't forget to like and as always, subscribe to YGO Strats so you can impress your smoking Italian wife and so you too can become a true duelist.